the Telecaster is without a doubt the most popular guitar in praise and worship. Its versatility makes it a workhorse for the P-Dub world. I got mine for less than $250. In my first video, I reviewed my Nashville Guitar Works 120 IV, which is a Telecaster style guitar. The video was terrible, I was nervous on camera, didn't know how to script a video, couldn't edit a video, and it was just plain hard to watch. So I've decided to do a better review with this guitar now that I've had some more time with it. The biggest obstacle on this review is information. There really isn't much information available about the guitar. Uh, the Nashville Guitar Works website doesn't list any stats for any of their guitars, they only have pictures of each model. The first thing you notice when you strap on this guitar is its weight. This thing is almost less Paul heavy. If you're not satisfied with the sound, you could always use it as a boat anchor. The one thing that really impresses me about Nashville Guitar Works is how they set up their guitars from the factory. I played several of them when I was in the music store picking this one out, and they all felt great right off the shelf. The guitar uses cheap, unbranded pickups, but they do get the job done. Uh, bridge pickup is a standard single coil, and the neck pickup is a hot rod or lipstick style single coil. Pickups have a very different tonal characteristics, which, which contribute to the versatility that the Telecasters are legendary for. The bridge pickup is bright and chimey, the neck pickup is more smooth and subdued. So what does it sound like? The differences between the pickups becomes even more apparent when you start adding overdrive. If you're using this guitar live, I would definitely make sure that you have a noise gate at the beginning of your signal chain. That keeps the single coal noise at bay, and they are pretty noisy. But where this guitar really shines is how it sits in a mix for praise and worship. That bell-like chime really lends itself well to the reverbs and the delays that are so prevalent in modern praise and worship music. So what are the pros and cons? This guitar has a decent tone in its factory setup. Uh, the pickups are a little noisy, but for the price, they really get the job done. This guitar is a prime candidate for customization. I'm looking into some Lambertone Blondies uh, for this guitar as soon as I can get them. 
The most frustrating thing about this guitar is the cheap plastic nut and the cheap tuners. I'd definitely recommend upgrading them. But considering the guitar's retail price is $199 with a gig bag, it's a great platform uh, to make your dream Telecaster. In fact, with its price point, the best thing about this guitar is that it makes a great canvas to make the guitar your own. If you're planning on creating your own dream Telecaster, why start with a more expensive guitar? The finishing leaves some room for improvement as well. The spot on the body where the neck meets, it's, it's sharp and it shows really hasty woodwork. But it isn't noticeable to anybody who's not playing the guitar, so it's really not a big deal. If you're getting value out of this video, please hit the like button. This helps me get these videos in front of more budget-minded worship leaders. If you want to see more gear reviews and tutorials, please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos. So who makes these guitars? Nashville Guitar Works is a division of MIRC, the Music Instrument Reclamation Company, in Franklin, Tennessee. MIRC takes used instruments and factory rejects, refurbishes, finishes, repairs, and distributes them to get music stores that need budget instruments. A while back, they decided they needed their own line of guitars, so they started Nashville Guitar Works. They designed a few Fender-style guitars and basses, as well as a few different styles of acoustic guitars. Up top is a link to where you can see my review of my Nashville Guitar Works acoustic electric guitar. Just wanted to add a note, these are not reclaimed guitars, they're all brand new. The fret edges are not sharp, the fret faces are a little bit gritty when you're bending the strings. That being said, this guitar plays pretty well. It comes from the factory well set up and intonated, and it's available in several finishes, and comes with a gig bag, all for $199 plus tax. It has decent controls, they are the dime size pots, not the full size pots, and it sounds pretty good out of the mix if you like the Telecaster sound. It's an easy to upgrade guitar and has pretty good build quality for its price. The nut isn't cut very well and could use some attention or replacement, but the biggest problem is the tuners. Luckily those can be upgraded inexpensively and will fix the biggest problems with this guitar. So what's the final verdict? Do you recommend it? This is a great guitar for a beginner because it can be easily upgraded and it can grow with you. I bought this guitar because I didn't own a single cool guitar and I needed one to help me make the presets for the Pod Go that would sound good with a single cool. I've used it live in two different churches. In one church it sounded great, uh, but in another church that had a better sound system, the noisy pickups really showed through. I didn't have a noise gate on my patches back then, so I'm sure it'll sound a lot better now. I would definitely say this guitar is a great value, and at its price point, it's really tough to beat. If you're planning on upgrading your guitar, I don't think you could find a better starting point. I've been happy with it, and definitely recommend the guitar. There's a link in the description to help you find a music store nearby you that sells them. I hope this review was helpful for you. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below, and I'll reply as soon as I can. I'll see you in the next video.